I'm going to talk briefly about school catchment areas. Uh, this is a project uh, done in collaboration with UNESCO, International Institute of Educational Planning, and I'm, I'm on the software development side from, from this Finnish company, Gispo, and, and Emily is the education expert here. So, uh, and she will be giving a talk this afternoon. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, what catchment areas really are, um, uh, UNESCO are really interested in whether students can actually access schools uh, in, in a certain area because it's, it's impossible to know whether a school is accessible by foot or by, by bicycle and so on. So what we really want is, is these travel time polygons based on some data on, on, on how accessible a school is, for example, instance, by foot in 15 minutes. And uh, luckily there's an open source tool that we can use for the job, which is called Graph Hopper, and I strongly recommend you check it out. Uh, so it basically uses OpenStreetMap data, so you can download OpenStreetMap data from anywhere in the world. And, and in many parts of the world, you also have the footpaths and the bike lanes available, so you can just start calculating your... It, it makes basically, it, it calculates the routes on the graph, and so you can easily calculate which areas you can access within, say, 15 minutes. So that's like the tool, but how, however, uh, educational planners won't necessarily be installing their own server. So, and, and, and running the calculations through the API. So what we created is a QGIS plugin to use a GraphHopper API. So, of course, first you need to have a GraphHopper instance running somewhere. So either you have to set up the server or then you can buy it from somebody, the service. But uh, there's, no, there's now an open source QGIS plugin you can use for accessing GraphHopper. Uh, it's called Catchment in QGIS plugins repository. And, and it's open source in GitHub, so you can find it on our GitHub and in UNESCO's GitHub pages. But anyway, the idea is that the user just takes, takes a point layer that they have, and then you get the distance, and, and then the profile they want to use, whether the students will be walking or cycling or whatever, and some extra options. And then what the plugin does, it, 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 it uses the graph upper API to get the polygons, the travel time polygons, to each of the points in the area with the parameters here, and gives you the polygon layer in QGIS. So I have time to show you some results, luckily. So on the left, there's results on Jamaica, which is basically pretty nice that you have enough open Instagram data in Jamaica so that you can really see the catchment areas of, of the schools around Jamaica. So the green areas are the ones where, where people have access to school less than 15 minutes away. And then, then, then the red areas are those where you have to walk for more than 45 minutes to get to the nearest school. So this is really nice. And then another image from UNESCO is, is on Madagascar, where uh, they didn't have enough open stream data on the local map, paths and roads uh, to, to, to find out school access. So what they did, they actually had an open stream mapping campaign to improve data in this region so that you could calculate school access. And these are the results after the mapping campaign. So you can see it's pretty nice that most of the, most of the, most of the area is, is really covered so that you can calculate whether people can access to school in, say, 15 minutes. So, and this, of course, benefits the educational planners, but it also benefits the local open street map community. So it's, it's a, in my opinion, it's a nice example of, of a case where you, you improve the data and then it might help other people too in the future. And then one final example, which is which was just my, my, my job to, to, for the Helsinki Metropolitan Authority to calculate uh, transit access. So, uh, luckily, the open street map data in Finland is really complete, so you have information on all the elevators and even the underground passages and escalators to train and metro stations all around the area. And also I did some fixes, obviously. But, but basically the data was very good, so I could just calculate, calculate access to the transit platform, so you can find out how long it does, take, does it take to, from your home to bike to the station and then walk the stairs to the platform underground. And so these yellow dots are the platform exits, and then this is like the five minutes area by bike that you can you can access. So you know so this kind of gives you an idea of the of the quality of transit service. So so it's just an example how you can use it for other purposes than just educational planning. So I guess I have something like one minute. So thank you, everybody. Uh, we are called Gispo. So if you have technical questions about the planning or plugin or, or graph hopper, you can contact us. And then if you have educational questions on education planning, Emily is, is the, the education expert here. Here, and she will be talking today in room on each on all UNESCO projects. So this is just like a technical example of, 
one of those. So ask her and ask me if you have any questions. Thank you.